Welcome back beer tubers. Today we're taking a look at one of the few beers from Scotland we can get here in the States. And this is the Tricare House Jacobite Ale. And this is a beer that I might have tried a long time ago, but maybe never. And maybe I just tried the regular uh, Tricare House beer. But yeah, I, I, I saw this. Uh, I had to pick it up. It's an ale brewed with coriander ferment and oak barrels. There's a lot of history behind this beer. The fact that it's... Uh, they, they boil it up in an old copper kettle, it's fermented in, uh, in old uh, oak barrels. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of history behind this beer. Go check out their website and look that up. But it's uh, 8%, you know, Scottish style, we heavy, Scotch ale, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a style I'm be brewing up soon, so I thought this is kind of nice research. Although the coriander, you know, isn't really typical of the style. But anyway, got it poured out. Not much of a head. Um, what's there is um, getting into like a tan color. Uh, it's a really pretty looking beer. A lot of ruby red going into mahogany notes. Um, you know, a little bit of brown in there. Good red tinges. Uh, looks great in the glass. Nice clarity. Not sure if it's bottle conditions. I imagine it probably is. I just poured the top of it out. Let's get the aroma. Oh wow. Man, the dark fruits on this beer is amazing. You're getting toffee and caramel, definitely, like, most present. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you're really getting that uh, really intense sweet bread. Uh, I imagine they boil this beer for a long, long time. Because you get a lot of that kind of melanoid malt character mixed with intense breadiness, intense caramel, toffee notes. But there's this really intense raisin fig character that I've, it's, wow, it's really surprising how intense it is. I, I don't think I've ever had a beer with that much intensity. It has this like a candied character to these dark fruits. And then you're getting a little bit of a, I'm trying to figure out if that's a hop character, almost like a slight citrus. Maybe it's the yeast ester, almost like an orange marmalade, kind of, uh, Sweet zest. I don't know, that could be some coriander playing in there. <clears throat> Depending on the coriander you can use. Might just get a nice spiciness or it can add uh, almost like a lemongrass character. But it's hard to tell if they're using English hops. If you're you know, getting that EKG fuggle kind of character in there as well. Uh, the bottle says best by June 2018. So I don't know how old this beer is because I didn't research it that much. But it smells amazing. Let's dig in. Cheers. Yeah, it's very nice. Maybe not quite as intense on the flavor as it is in the aroma, but you know, 8%. Um, you know, it's not an overly sticky sweet beer. It's got some nice balance to it. I think that's probably the trickier part about the style is, is even though you want it to be a big malt bomb, you don't want it to be cloyingly sweet. And so they, uh, they have some balance in there. And I don't know if that's a combination of the, uh, the hops and the coriander kind of helping out balance out that malt but yeah it's it's big huge malt up front <clears throat> and the back end dries out quite a bit um, not a lot of lingering sweetness so up front get some nice caramel notes um just a real and then that's kind of combined with this really like sweet bread like um bread that would have molasses in it you know that kind of character up front has a nice, uh, I don't want to go doughy, but um, a nice like soft molasses infused bread with some sweetness and then combine that with some caramel notes. And then it transitions into a more toffee, you know, darker, not quite burnt sugar, but you know, getting into that kind of brown sugar, molasses note, which then plays with these dark fruits, which are getting a lot of fig, uh, plum, that type of note um, and then the back end you kind of have this uh, little little kick of alcohol but even though it's really well masked that combines with this kind of like uh, sugary raisin character and then a little bit of a, like a dryness that might be coming from like an oak tannin character maybe a little touch of oak because there's also this earthiness in there a little bit of spiciness comes through as well and once again, not sure if that's a hop or character or um, or, com or a combination of that and a coriander doing that. And it just dries out enough 
that it doesn't stick around that you're ready to just dive right back into the beer. So it's a, it's a fantastic beer. As it warms, I'm also getting this really intense, deep uh, cherry character coming through. And that could also be a malt characteristic or really nice, nicely done sort of oxidation notes to it. Um, cause I'm not really picking up any kind of like cardboard type of character, but yeah, really nice cherry character that mixes in with those dark fruits as well. Um, pick up a little bit on the, and the, the, some fruitiness is in there certainly coming from the yeast they use as well. I don't know if they're using the, uh, traditional Scottish ale yeast in this beer. I'm guessing they are. So once again, sorry, I didn't do enough research on it, but. Yeah, maybe a little bit of that um, orange marmalade coming through as well in the beer. So lots of complexity, 8%, it, um, just a slight touch of alcohol, uh, really well masked. Uh, maybe the alcohol has a little sweetness and spiciness to the beer. But uh, yeah, world-class beer, the Tricare, uh Jacobite Ale, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of those beers that I've heard about, so you know, the people review it. Just, yeah, just happened to be in the right mood to pick that beer up, do a little bit of research on the style, and uh, just really wild me. So I uh, highly recommend this one if you're looking for a nice big multi beer. Until next time, please comment and subscribe. Cheers.